Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, uh, there are exclusive Patreon videos each week. We want to thank everybody for their support. Couldn't do it without you guys. Very much appreciated. Thank you. So I was hit with, uh, well, I was hit with our clothes. And thinking about clothes, because Cindy made a comment like, you know, there's certain things I just don't want to wear anymore. I just don't want to wear them. And, and I was thinking, well, you know, I couldn't wait to get home and get out of what I was wearing too. And we're getting more sensitive. I think most people that are on this, this ascension path are getting a lot more sensitive and all of a sudden realizing that a lot of things that maybe we never even thought of uh, are really impacting us and now we're starting to awaken to the fact that our clothes possibly are also toxifying us so as you see this post right here the clothes we wear they absolutely matter for our health more than you might think because again nothing is truly solid you can certainly go take a bath and absorb epsom salts into your body magnesium into your body and we know, you know, you could be around some quote unquote toxic chemicals and, you know, start feeling off from the fumes that they're giving. So it would make sense that toxic clothes would absolutely impact our health. As this is talking about some people that have developed acne problems because of their clothes. Polyester, for example increases miscarriages in women and reduces male fertil fertility at a scary rate. Oh yeah, you know when you think about polyester it, it's made from dyed melted petroleum polymers. So things like yoga pants, a lot of gym wear. I, I mean I've had um, I've had clothes and I remember once uh, I actually had shorts that melted and I was thinking, wait a minute, why would my shorts melt? It's melting like a crayon. What's what's up with that? You know, I had left them on on the um, I had left them on the metal part of, of the truck you know, to dry thinking, yeah, I'll put them out on the, on the truck and they'll dry. But no, they actually melted, melted. Or, you know, sometimes you put those clothes in the dryer and, and they get melted. Yeah. So, again, you might not realize it, but if you're using polyester, um, <laughs> you certainly uh, you're wearing plastic, so to speak. And, you know, it really is a battle to stay healthy. This is a little dramatization there. They're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at us. You know, um, you know, we were in an office the other day. And somebody said, oh, would you like water? And I know that they're going to hand you a plastic water bottle. Uh, no, we're good because I'm bringing my cup with me, which basically had green tea in it. Um, as I'm switching a little bit more to just coffee in the morning because I have a coffee addiction. And going with green tea after that or herbal teas, you know, as it gets later in the day. Uh, wear natural fibers like cotton and linen. And when it says cotton, make sure it's organic too. And, and I know all this is expensive. And all this comes at a time when things are getting tighter and tighter for people. Plastic, you know, you really don't want it touching your bodies. Um, I want to also just bring up the fact that, again, so much of our modern way of doing things is, is coming really from the same sources. When we, when we think about Rockefeller, and we've talked about Rockefeller medicine, how about the clothes? Again, you know, it was said that the Rockefellers uh, had to face this issue of what are they going to do with all their petroleum byproducts? Well, you know, we understand plastic bottles and all that, but how about also the fact that you're literally wearing, in, in most cases, most people are wearing these, these toxic chemicals all day long. And, you know, I was telling Mike, and I think we'll get into that maybe a little bit more 
d down the video, but it's not just about having the clothes next to your body. It's also, so let's say you go out and you do buy the good clothes, the good cotton clothes, but you don't change your laundry soap. You know, that laundry soap ha leaves a film and a soot all over your clothes and it lays against your body even if it is really good cotton or really good wool or really good something you know so what what i do i wash my clothes mostly with borax i use a lot of borax there's some other laundry soaps out there uh, like attitude and molly suds that seem to work my the biggest complaint i've seen is people can't seem to get the stains out very well so i think um attitude I've heard is the best but you may have to do some shopping around I use borax we don't worry a whole lot around here about little stains um just because you know we work from home I mean we're not it's not horrible but still if somebody has a job to go to um they might have to worry about stains so you might need to look around a little bit more to get something that'll take the stains out yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the reality for Cindy and I is that um, we don't need a lot of wardrobe changes. And I know things can get very expensive if you do have to dress up. I remember how much, you know, a, a linen shirt could cost. It could cost a lot. And of course, last time I bought anything for work was like over a decade ago. So, you know, I understand um, how expensive all this gets, but that's also part of, of the system, too. And when we see this toxic overload, you know, PFAS is, we, we talk about that. We've, people are so aware of this as far as, you know, thinking of it in your food and, and containers, but not necessarily thinking about that in lines with what's touching you, like your clothes or even also, you know, bed, bedding. Think about bedding as well. It's really interesting. When I saw this, this this really um, hit home too. And it's about the frequency of our um, our clothes and what what we're touching all day long. There was a study done, and I'll give you guys the links um, again, as always. This study was done in two thousand three. It was done by a Jewish doctor, Heidi Yellen on the frequencies of fabric. She was curious about why the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, would claim you should wear certain fabrics above others, and also mentioned not to wear wool and linen together. Very interesting um, concept here. There, there's a lot of things that are handed down that we don't know why. Why, why did they hand this down? This sounds kind of crazy. Well, this this study is is very very interesting because it, it found that you know one of the healthiest things you could possibly wear uh, was linen, and the other was wool, but together they seem to cancel out the benefits of each other. And the only thing I can think of is maybe yin and yang type of energies in there. But when you look at the uh, frequency range she used as a um, as a measuring tool, let's say, uh, a dead body basically was, was measured at 15. It ranked 15 on the scale, and 100 was a, a healthy live body. So the clothes would, would be ranked accordingly. So it, it shows that according to this machine, she used a machine called an Ag Environ machine, it was designed by a retired professor to analyze the signature frequencies of agricultural commodities to help farmers determine the right time to harvest a plant or to plant. Uh, according to the machine, human body has a frequency of 70 to 100 M and people with illness that drops below 50 M. So anything that should have a higher frequency should be beneficial to us to wear. And then again, lower frequency would be, you know, not beneficial to us. So linen and wool rock the Casbar. Yeah, absolutely. They show that their frequency is 5,000. So that's a lot of frequency boosting. These could actually absolutely um, probably aid in, in literally aid, aid in healing. Yeah, but when you use them at the same time, the frequency went to zero. And this was the reference in the Torah that sparked the entire study. It says not to wear 
linen with wool. So organic cotton comes out basically neutral. It's it's came in right at 100, pretty much in tune with a healthy human body. However, organic cotton matters. Standard bleached cotton measured at 40. So that's not healthy. That's basically below a, a person that would be ill. And shockingly, the frequency of silk measured 10. But that was thought because maybe it was done through modern processes. So if you had silk that was processed naturally it could be that it would be um, much better for you rayon 15 rayon and viscose which is a process that uses mulched fibers also needs chemicals again to break down got a dismal frequency rating polyester acrylic spandex lycra viscose and nylon all measured zero yeah so you know stay away and then it goes into um, help, uh, help, hemp, I should say. I still need more coffee this morning. Um, yeah, hemp, they didn't find any studies that were done measuring hemp. But, you know, looking at it, the thought is it, it probably is um, healthy. And again, it, it, it's all about the process. I, I would say so. You know, I, I'm leaning toward organic, and it, it's difficult to get organic these days, especially when they grow in, in big, big fields. Um, but I, I think anything that has to do with plant <clears throat> is going to be better than uh, mixing chemicals together and mulching them and heating them up and cooling them and, and doing all the processes and then having that lay against your skin. So, uh, you know, the more expensive clothes you look back and you're going to see that, yeah, they're more like 100% cotton or they're, 100, you know, wool. I mean, the, the better clothes. And, and it's like that just goes to show how the controllers, they know these things. They don't tell us these things, how our health is being broken down little by little, bit by bit, you know, by the most common thing in the world, by putting your clothes on. Huh. I mean, who'd have thought that that could make you so, so sick? and changing our clothes you know we do have a very dear family member that we just love 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 so much <clears throat> and she was using bandages on her leg and uh I, I was doing some reading in a book called the cure for all diseases and it was talking about parasites and how the parasites feed off of so many of these chemicals and uh and even the stuff that's on uh bandages you know over-the-counter bandages and i told her to switch to charcoal are, are not charcoal but bamboo switched to something or, organic and natural and she did and it she started making more progress i mean a lot more progress so we were really excited about that and um so excited you know we don't really have regular band-aids anymore not not around here you know unless i mean it was back up to my backup to my backup but first line of defense is going to be something that has to do with plant yeah, it, it, a couple of points on hemp. You know, uh, it's you know very interesting in that it's it's fast growing and it also enriches the soil it's grown in. Uh, that's really cool. I, I think again we go back to the ancient times, like um, for instance, it, amaranth it, as an alternative, you know, in consumption to. Uh, things like rice, uh, you know, amaranth is is nutritionally um, dense, and it was used by the ancient Egyptians. I, I always think the farther and back in, we can go in time, and look at what they were doing, we could get a better idea of what's going to be um, healthy for us. Because you know, in some ways, they knew way more uh, than we do. So you know, again, think in terms of of bioelectric impact as we are bioelectric magnetic beings this is this is what we are and you want to enhance your conductivity this is why you know again being properly hydrated is so important and you know again you want to be you really do want exposure to the sun because the sun is so nourishing and it does um also give us information and upgrades coming from uh, the source of all things and be on the lookout for bmhca this is in cosmetics it's a reproductive toxicant again 
when you look at what's happened with infertility rates and sperm count, uh, it's just dropped off a cliff and it's obviously it's all environmental it's all environmental um, you know again I've I've worked in a uh, pharmacy for four years I worked in in the pharmaceutical uh, industry um, and it was fascinating to see how so many of these uh, really really intelligent people understood that we were poisoning ourselves and and yet the average person uh didn't necessarily understand it and and this is just one of those other things uh that gets in there there's so many different ways uh that we are being exposed to toxins every day it'll just boggle your mind you know, one of the things that really creates a lot of problems for women is, are all the creams, you know, the face creams, the skin creams, and we're always trying to do a little bit better, you know, take care of ourselves, so we buy the really good expensive creams, but those creams most of the time are f just cram-packed full of, of the bad estrogens that you really do not want to be soaked into your body, those endocrine disruptors. And I can tell you from personal experience, I don't have any of those, absolutely any of those creams in my, my closets or, or anywhere. But what I have switched to is castor oil. Now, castor oil is so amazing. You want uh, organic, cold-pressed uh, castor oil in a, a glass bottle if you can find it. And you mix that with another oil, another carrier oil like black seed oil or, or rosehip oil and the castor oil when you put that on your skin, for your face, for your arms, for your hands, whatever, it's a little bit oily, but my gosh, does it sink in the skin and you'll have the best skin ever. You can even use just castor oil, but a lot of people complain it's oily for a few hours, but that's because it's actually sitting on your skin and it's healing you. So that's what I've changed everything. I, no more creams, no makeup, it's all castor oil and it, it can even help your eyelashes grow and everything. So there's a lot we can do to really cut back. And my favorite, when you're getting away from the creams, it's you just sidestep over to castor oil. It's great. It's wonderful. So please dig up some videos on castor oil so you can know uh, where and how to use that. And yes, you can use that below the belt. There's some good videos out there for women who help you if you're going through certain stages of menopause. I mean, that stuff is just amazing. So you can get away from all those endocrine disruptors that, and the prescriptions that um, the DRs give you to help you heal something that's not going to heal you. It's just going to continue to interrupt your natural processes. Uh, you know, it, it, if it's hard for you to figure out how to say it, then probably avoid it, ba would, basically. When you have this laundry list and, and you don't understand what it is, uh, I would just avoid it. You know, laundry detergents could be horrible, too. Uh, and so, again, simplicity, like, like Cindy's saying. I mean, we buy a lot of borax. We buy baking soda in big tubs. Uh, we buy uh, organic coconut oil to use, again, in big quantities, and we avoid all these highly processed things that are just loaded with endocrine disruptors and cancer-causing chemicals. You know, and I just remembered too, um, this is going to be on my, my list of things to hopefully get someday in this life, but um, o ozone for the laundry. And now I've heard that that works really, really well. It gets the stains out. It cleans your clothes. You know, it might be a little bit for the setup, but then, then you're good to go. I, I have not tried it personally that's why you know i i don't like recommending it because i haven't tried it personally but i've read a lot of reviews and when i do get a chance i will get that installed absolutely natural things <laughs> things that have just simply one ingredient the more we do this the better off we're going to be you know and when you see uh clothing or if there's bedding like antimicrobial bedding antimicrobial uh clothing oh avoid it at all costs 
you know, you see these these things, you know, again, towels that are going to prevent bacteria growth on the surface. What's it made of? Ask yourself, because again, you know, anti, as we've said so many times, when we when we look at the whole idea and concept of, you know, antimicrobial, antibiotic, it's also going to impact you really large in a very, very large way. And so many people have blasted their their own microbiome into oblivion. This will cause more autoimmune issues. It, absolutely. You know, it, it, just think simply. It, I, I guess that's the best way to put it. Think natural, think simply, and, and just simplify your, your life by eliminating anything that has a laundry list of items in it that you can't pronounce. Mm-hmm. I mean, cleaners to get things white. You can also use peroxide. You know, I think you got to test that, though. But um, cleaners for my kitchen, you know, I will use uh, hydrogen peroxide mixed with a little baking soda mixed with a little borax and shake that up and spray it around and just let it whiten the counters for me. And, you know, it has a different feel to it. It, you know, with, with there's the chemical cleaners, and I know there's a lot out there. There's Method, there's Mrs. Myers, but I don't, those don't feel the same clean. You know, they, they wipe down the counters, but they don't feel clean. And you also have to watch out for, for these pitfalls, you know, that there's these uh, cleaners and chemicals, and they're called greenwashed, and it's because they look good on the surface, but when you look at the actual ingredients and how they are made, they are not green. They're not green at all. So the best way to know that you're getting some green cleaner is to make it yourself. Do it yourself. Now, the ozone uh, laundry laundry thing, I'm excited about because I've seen how ozone can work on the body. And I've seen how ozone can heal. And if you're washing your clothes in that, oh my gosh, it's going to smell so good. It's going to smell so, so good. It's like Mike's favorite smell. But you should not breathe it in. But when you are making ozone, you do smell a little bit of it, just a tiny bit. And that's not hurting anyone. Oh, to me, it's pine forest at, <laughs> at, at, at 9,000 feet elevation. Yeah. It's just, it's so fresh. It's incredible. Um, and it, it just feels purifying because it is. Again, uh, who's going to do things better than Mother Nature? Really? I mean, Mother Nature is the original. And so things were created with a positive intent. And so, you know, again, do things simply. Think, think in terms of simplifying our life. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.